Hey, welcome to Tustin. Let's take a quick little tour of the Tustin area. Hey guys, hi, my name is Anthony Nitz and I'm uh, a real estate agent in Orange County, California. Actually, I live in the Tustin area. I've been here since fifth grade. Yeah, you can do that math. <laughs> it's been a while. I've been here for, for a long, long time. And as a matter of fact, uh, I went to the local high school here. I went to several of the schools here. Uh, married a Tustin High School rival, a crosstown rival. And so, you know, we've been very entrenched in the Tustin area and, and we love this area. We love Tustin. We love everything that it has to offer. In my, per my opinion, it is a perfect little city to live in. And I'm going to kind of show you some of the things there, but there's, you know, there's, everything's not perfect. And so we're going to talk about a few of the things that, you know, are not perfect <laughs> as well. So, uh, let's just kind of get in and I figure the best thing that we can do is let's get a lay of the land. Why is Tustin so special geographically? Because it really is. Let's take a little look here. So if you look at my screen here, you'll see we've got the Tustin area highlighted. Now there's three different, what I, you know, parts to the Tustin area. And I use the word Tustin area, not just the city of Tustin because there's an area over here called North Tustin. Ignore all this stuff over here because this is actually part of Santa Ana, but it shares the same zip code as the North Tustin area. Why? Because it is what is considered unincorporated county area. It's actually not part of the city of Tustin. However, it shares a lot of the municipal services. It shares some of the schools. Uh, the kids, you know, there go to Tustin schools. Some of the schools are in the 92705 area. So when they may not be officially part of the city of Tustin, they definitely are a part of Tustin, right? So that's part of the Tustin area and, and, and important to know. And I say not this part over here on the left side of what is the 55 freeway, which goes right down here because that area for the most part has been acquired by the city of Santa Ana. So they're totally different, same zip code. I know it's weird and confusing, but I just want you to kind of get an idea. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at uh, the city of Tustin as a whole. We're just gonna, when we say the city of Tustin, I'm just gonna include everything, okay? Uh, but we've got two or three different colors here. We've got yellow, green, and red. And if we take a look at yellow, yellow is the uh, 92780 zip code. You know, I kind of like that this is like the heart of the area. The heart of Tustin is where all this, you know, has, has begun. Uh, and one of the great things that I like about Tustin, and you can kind of see this on this map here. Let's see if I zoom in a little bit. You'll see that Tustin is primarily as well as North Tustin, as well as Tustin Ranch that we're going to get into, primarily residential area. Okay. And this is one of the things, in my opinion, that make it really special because yes, it has some commercial, but you'll see it's kind of on the outskirts of the area. Uh, so most of it on the interior, yes, there's shopping and things like that in here, but not a lot of commercial stuff. A lot of the other cities that are surrounding, I mean, you've got commercial like backed up right next to residential, you know, areas. And for me, I don't like that. I, you know, I, I, I like to have, you know, nice, uh, good, open, spacious residential areas where everybody's kind of got a little bit of room to, you know, get a little bit of elbow room and things like that. And the same thing goes with North Tustin. I mean, North Tustin is all residential. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. It's all residential. There is like nothing here other than schools that would be considered uh, commercial. And uh, for the most part, Tustin Ranch as well. If we take a look at Tustin Ranch. Now, Tustin Ranch is 92782 uh, zip code. And so some people ask me, they said, what's the difference between Tustin Ranch and Tustin? Well, the difference is, and this is also what, to me, it just makes this really special is that in, in Tustin, there, there, there aren't many planned communities. If we go down into this area here, you're going to see there was a planned community called Tustin Meadows. Great little neighborhood to live in. You got uh, Pepper Tree over here. Uh, you got Laurel Wood over here. Uh, but for the most part, you know, the little neighborhoods that were developed, they were just developed, residential, you know, sold off and uh, people bought it and, and lived in there. But there's, you know, not many associations 
for residential area. But if you like the planned community look where, you know, everything's kind of similar, everything, you know, follows the same rules and the same guidelines and things like that, then Tustin Ranch is definitely your area, right? Because a lot of people compare, you know, they say, well, Tustin, do we do Tustin? Do we do Irvine and things like that? I've actually had quite a few people who live in Tustin, sold their house thinking that they wanted to live in Irvine and then moved to Irvine and found out, oh my gosh, everything is so restrictive over there that they end up moving back to Tustin. And so Tustin Ranch and the city of Tustin are a good, perfect little blend of having a choice of, do I want just mind my own business? I do my own stuff, obviously within limits, you know, not have people bother me. Or do I want to have a planned community where I know that everything's going to be taken care of, everything's maintained, everything looks a certain way, and it's very, very clean and very neat and everything, which the city of Tustin is well, but Tustin Ranch is definitely follows more of that formula. On the other hand, you've got the North Tustin area again. And so let me try, kind of try to help understand how to, how I think of the different areas. And again, I've been a real estate agent in the Tustin area since 1997. So I've been doing this for a while. I like to think of, you know, again, Tustin is just the heart. The 9270, that's the heart of Tustin. That's what it is, right? Uh, North Tustin, we always kind of joke around and just say it's kind of like the old money, right? That's where like the old money is because people would buy these homes and they, because they kind of back up into the foothills and things like that, that uh, they would buy these homes in 1964 for, you know, $38,000. And, you know, because of that, they're, they, they built up, you know, wealth and things like that. And it passes on generationally. Uh, and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, and that's, again, it's just my own way of, uh, understanding of in the North Tustin area. And, uh, you know, and people take a lot of pride in the fact that, hey, we live in North Tustin, right? It is a very, uh, you know, people love living in North Tustin because the lots tend to be spread out more. They tend to, uh, have just more, more space, bigger, lots and things like that and uh because different parts of it at, t at different times were horse property and things like that it's still actually a horse property you can you know get the idea that, that like they just do their own thing and p other people don't get in their in their business with it you know but uh some areas have really good views uh based on where they're at in the in the hillside or in the in the uh, foothills there uh tustin ranch on the other hand uh, we like to, you know, I just kind of refer to it as the, um, the new money, uh, because Tustin Ranch was started developing in 1986, I believe it was again, because it is a planned community, uh, you know, you know, everything's going to be the same. And so just kind of just helps me understand. It might help you understand if you just, you know, want those different lifestyles that that's how you're going to decide. Now, North Tustin and uh tustin ranch definitely uh higher end on the home sales prices okay so if you are looking for more luxury you're looking for something really special you're definitely going to get up there tustin ranch has a lot more condos where north tustin has uh, nine condos in the whole North Tustin area. The city of Tustin, definitely more affordable and depending on where you're at in the city, you're going to find homes that are definitely more affordable. You're going to have a good mix of condos and houses throughout the entire city. Uh, over here, it, when we get, oops, or when we get down to the south part over here, we're kind of looking into what is called Tustin Legacy. So there used to be an old, uh, a marine base that was here in this area called Tustin Marine Corps Air Station. It's very, very, a lot of history behind it. And over the years, when the bases shut down and everything, Tustin, you know, um, obviously took that back and acquired it. And over time have been developing uh, the Tustin legacy area. So with, you know, population increase and things like that, there's more of the housing that's there is more of multifamily housing, apartment complexes, uh, condominium complexes, things like that, but also that planned community kind of look and feel. Okay. So you're really going to, uh, enjoy that if that's what you like. 
So, like I said, just kind of the layout of the Tustin area. Again, we're not looking on the left side or the, or the west side of the 55 freeway. But why is Tustin such a great place geographically? Well, let's take a look at the freeways that we have in Orange County. So if we take a look, you got the, the I-5. By the way, here's a little tip. If you're coming from another state or area where you actually refer to the freeways as uh, take I-5 or take I-405, um, that doesn't apply here. Every freeway, highway, whatever it is, is called the 5 freeway, the 55 freeway, the 22 freeway okay so just so you know because i know i've had i've had people um, that i've worked with and they're like that's weird that you guys say the in front of the freeways but if we take a look we got i5 freeway we got i405 uh the 55 the 57 the 91 and the 22 i605 eh, i don't even count that that's way 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 up on the very north uh tip of orange county but these of all these freeways you're going to see that the i5 runs right through Tustin. You're going to see that the 55 freeway runs right through Tustin. You're going to see that the 22 freeway uh, is right on the edge of Tustin. The 91 and the 405 are within blocks. And so let's go back and look at that map here. And let's start with the 55 freeway. So the 55 freeway is kind of just a, a great um, way to get from the 91 freeway, uh, let's go. So you've got the 91 freeway up here. It's on the north side of Anaheim, heading out towards Riverside Corona area. Um, and then 91 heading, you know, west into the Los Angeles area. But 55 runs straight down this way and cuts right through Tustin. Okay. And guess where it takes you? It takes you to iconic Newport Beach. Huntington Beach right over here. You've got Laguna Beach. You've got Dana Point. you got all these great beaches right here, all within minutes of, uh, of the Tustin area th through the 55 freeway heading south. Now, I say minutes, but warning, during the summer, people love to go to the beach. So a little bit of traffic you're going to run into there. And then let's take a look at the 5 freeway, right? One of the biggest freeways in... Uh, all of California anyways, goes all the way from all the way up Northern California. Okay. I mean, you can take it all the way down through San Diego and end up in Tijuana if you want to, basically, it, it you know, kind of ends there. Um, and so, you know, if you're looking for a straight through shot, you got it. Now the 405, again, we got the Tustin area here, the 405 freeway. This is going up this way, and it kind of follows more along the coastline where the 5 freeway goes more inland. So depending on where you're going into the L.A. area or uh, northern Orange County or you're going to Long Beach or something like that, then you have access to that. And then the 57 freeway, let's pop that up here. So uh, we got over here, sorry. We got the 57 freeway, which is north of the Tustin area. But little jaunt on the 20, I mean, little, tiny jaunt on the 22 freeway or the 5 freeway will take you to the 57 freeway. And this takes you to, um, you know, some great venues such as Disneyland, right? So you're going to end up in Disneyland going right up the 5 freeway. I mean, you can do the 57 and cut over on Ball Road, but uh, you got Disneyland right here. Uh, up here, you've got... Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, there's a, a cool little place here that you guys should know about too. Let's see if I can get it to come. Oh, Adventure City. So this is a great little thing. I, I, I share this because sometimes a lot of people have you know younger kids that they want to come in. And Disneyland can be quite expensive. Um, uh, Knott's Berry Farm, definitely more affordable. Uh, but, you know, a totally different vibe and feel. Adventure City, on the other hand, if you've got little kids, you know, probably under 10, I would say Adventure City is perfect because it has more of the little kid rides that they will really enjoy. As a matter of fact, I just enjoy going on the rides with my kids when they were younger. 
at Adventure City and way, way, way more affordable. So when you're trying to figure out, gosh, where's that place that we can go to? <clears throat> Unless you're going to spend a lot of money on a Disney Pass or even a Knott's Berry Farm Pass, going to Adventure City is a great option uh, to keep the to keep the kids busy, busy, and it's all you know within just a short little drive from uh, Tustin. Now we've also got if you take a look at Orange County, so this uh, going up to Long Beach, so like right here, uh, going over Anaheim. You know, Brea, Anaheim Hills, and coming back down to San Clemente. So basically San Clemente to Long Beach to Anaheim Hills. Kind of this little triangle. This is Orange County right here. And it is centrally located right smack in between Los Angeles and San Diego. Okay? So you, you know, we're, we're so centrally located. It is just amazing. And because Tustin has those major freeways running right through it, you're on the freeway in minutes heading to where, whatever destination that you're going to. Okay. But also if you take a look at Orange County, again, if we go, um, you know, San, San Clemente, Long Beach, Anaheim Hills. I mean, we are in the heart. We are the heart of Orange County. So great, great, geographically just a great place to be. And because we back up against the Santa Ana Mountains, we don't have all this development going on over here. Uh, there's a lot of parks, hiking trails, uh, uh, different places that we can go to enjoy nature uh, as part of, you know, living in the Tustin area. Now, as far as affordability goes, uh, we are looking at, you know, we're, we're probably a perfect middle of the road because as you go south into Irvine and, and other south county areas, the prices definitely can increase uh, because they just have, uh, you know, different demand. As you go into the north area where a lot of the older areas, then, you know, prices can be a little bit more affordable. So I think that we're definitely in a very you know, perfect middle of the road um, affordability. The schools in Tustin, if you take a look at the schools, you can go to the Tustin Unified School District website and check them out. But you'll see we've got tons of schools. And this is what I mean about North Tustin. But we've got, for example, a Royal School is in North Tustin, which is 92705. By the way, a little tip on the North Tustin thing. North Tustin is actually technically... Uh, called Santa Ana, but it is not part of the city of Santa Ana. Um, at some point in time, they had, you know, concluded that anything that is not uh, city incorporated in any city is just called Santa Ana. And so it's called Santa Ana. But there is some stigma that goes along with that if you're not familiar with the Santa Ana area. At one point in time, it was a little rougher and, um, you know, so the, the people in North Tustin wanted to distance themselves and say, you know, we don't want to be known as Santa Ana, but I'm just telling you it, that it's important to understand that. So when if you move into the North Tustin area, you're going to see Santa Ana as an address. You're going, oh, wait a minute, I thought we were moving to North Tustin. Either one's fine, okay? And there's also tax benefits from making purchases online of living in the North Tustin area and the Tustin area versus Santa Ana. So that's also an important distinction. And if you have questions about that, you just ask me. Uh, but you'll see lots of different uh, elementary schools that are available for um, for your kids. And they, we got, you know, look, I would love to say that we've got, oh, the best schools in the world, you know, but, you know, I, I think we have great schools. Uh, I don't think they're the best in the world, but I think we have great schools. I think that they do a really good job. Middle schools. Um, so, yeah, I went to Columbus Tustin. My wife went to Hughes Ele or Middle School. We also have Pioneer and Ut. And, uh, again, great schools. Okay. Uh, if you look at the high schools, you've got three, I would say, what I would refer to as three primary schools. You've got 
uh, Tustin High School, which was, what, 1944, I believe it was, when it was originally built. And then, um, uh, and that's in the heart of Tustin. You've got Foothill High School, which kind of serves more of that North Tustin area. And then you got Beckman High School, which serves more of the, the Tustin Ranch and uh, east side of Tustin uh, area for schools. And again, all great schools. And you can do the research on those to see, you know, to get ratings and things like that. And like I mentioned earlier in Tustin, we've got a lot of great parks. Good for just hanging out, places to meet people, picnics, things like that. Uh, stroll, you know, just taking a stroll, walking trails. Uh, we've got places around us where you can go and do like some really uh, serious hikes. Uh, you, there's uh, you, there's even places like up off of Santiago Canyon you can go do a little bit of off-road and get up into the hills here and do that as well. So we have a lot of great things and again minutes away from the beach and if you take a look here you get up here and you go well gosh you know I'd like to get up to the mountains. Well you got Mount Baldy right up the, the road here. And then you got Big Bear right up over, uh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Right there. Big Bear, uh, for skiing and things like that. So, I mean, how perfect is this? Where we got, you know, minutes to the beach, minutes to skiing, uh, mountains, all that good stuff. So now what's kind of one of the downsides of Tustin? I mean, I'll be honest with you. In my opinion, not a lot of negative things about Tustin. Tustin is a really good community. Uh, but one of the things, if you take a look right here, you've got John Wayne International Airport. And uh, it's definitely not an LAX or something like that. So we don't have a lot of huge you know, flights coming in. But it does have a lot of traffic that comes in. And guess where they fly? <laughs> Their flight path is right up through this area. And living in, you know, in Tustin, my house is right in the flight path. So it's pretty, you know, consistent as far as the way that they fly and there's different apps and things like that that you can look up the flight paths and stuff. But you know what? Everybody's so used to it. It's like anything. Oh, gosh, I don't want to live in a flight path. Well, you can find, you know, live a couple blocks over and, and you won't even notice it. You know, my neighbors and everybody else that I know that live in the flight path, you just, it's, it, you get used to it. You just deal with it. You go, okay, no big deal. It's not a big deal. It really isn't. But, you know, on a Sunday night when you're just really trying to have a quiet night and you got a lot of planes coming in, it can get you a little bit. So let's talk about traffic. Uh, the city of Tustin, the, the, the traffic in the city itself is actually not that bad. The biggest issues of traffic is when you get on the freeways and especially the five freeway or in the afternoon, if you, so a lot of people, they will come in from the Corona Riverside area to come and work in the Orange County, um, you know, industrial areas and things like that. And then after, uh, you know, once getting off time, they're all heading right back up to, you know, Corona. So that means they're going up the 55 to the 91 freeway. Well, if you're got to head that way in the afternoon, it can get quite busy during the afternoon. Also, you know, you got to realize there's a lot of traffic coming to and from Los Angeles. So going on the five freeway, it just depends on what time of day and, you know, kind of what activities are going on. Weekend traffic, typically very light, except for during the summer when everybody's going out to the beaches, you know, it'll get really busy on the 55 freeway heading down towards the beach because that's, that's where everybody wants to be. I don't blame them. I want to be there too. So, Traffic generally is pretty light, you know, or manageable, I would say. But that's going to be a matter of your perspective because I, you know, uh, went to visit my father-in-law in Utah. And when he picked us up from the airport, there was three whole cars on the freeway. And he was wondering why there was a traffic jam. <laughs> and it's a little bit more than that. So depending on what your traffic is like there, it might be something you have to get used to. Uh, you might have to add a little bit of extra time to your schedule. What's another thing that makes Tustin a great community? Um, and, you know, I use the phrase Rustin and Tustin. Uh, it's a term of endearment. If you don't know what it is, go watch my other video that where I explain what Rustin and Tustin means. It's because 
unlike some of the other cities that are around us that are that have a lot of mix of commercial and and industrial and you know right there in with residential communities and things like that in Tustin and Tustin Ranch and North Tustin there's not a lot of it. it's primarily all residential and you'll see all the commercial is on the outside of the Tustin area which makes it great because it kind of, you know, some people kind of go, well, this is kind of, sort of, not really, but sort of a sleepy little town. I call it the the greatest uh, small, big town around because there's a lot of things going on and a lot of activity, but when it's time to be done, it's time to be done. You know, there's not a lot of stuff other uh, happening in the Tustin area after a, you know, a certain time of day. It's pretty quiet. And so, you know, I really, I really enjoy that a lot. And if I want to go, you know, do activities and things like that, everything is within minutes of Tustin. So perfect little community. Let's talk about shopping real quick. So in Tustin, uh, in the heart of Tustin, you've got uh, tons of, you know, I mean, tons of places. There's all kinds of other little shops and restaurants and things like that all over the place. Uh, you got here Larwin Square, which is a, Historic. I mean, that thing that's been around forever, uh, pretty much since the beginning. You've got uh, over here on 17th Street. Let's get up there. So you've got 17th Street right here. You've got what is known as Enderly Center. Now, Enderly Center. <clears throat> this is a this is a great little shopping area for. These great little boutique shops. If you just like that type of shopping and some great restaurants, you got Zove's, 17th Street Grill in El Torito. I mean, great shopping for specifically these little boutique shops that have just amazing stuff in them. So definitely worth checking that out. But if you're kind of like, hey, I want the destination locations and things like that over here uh, on Jamboree, we've got the Tustin Marketplace, or what they just call, and you'll see it right there, the Marketplace. They just call it the Marketplace. And the reason is because some of it is on, so we've got uh, Jamboree Road. Sorry, Jamboree Road right here. Oh, wait. Yeah, Jamboree Road right here. And um, uh, part of the Marketplace is on the Tustin side. Part of it is on the Irvine side. Okay, so, but lots of great restaurants, lots of shopping. I mean, let's take a look here. You've got, you know, um, Best Buy, Total Wine and More, Nordstrom Rack. You've got Arizona Leather, uh, Party City, you know, Home Depot. You know, you've got you've got all that over here. I mean, and, and, the, and then just bunches of little restaurants, tests of fast food stuff. Uh, Hop Daddy Burger, you've got uh, Ethan Allen Furniture Store there, you've got Jared, California Pizza Kitchen, Loft, White White House, uh, Black Market, you know, a bunch of different little shops and things like that, Postal Annex, uh, all kinds of little restaurants right in here, a lot of people like to go there and just kind of eat, it's, it's a great lunch destination there. Uh, you've got TJ Maxx, you've got Old Navy, <laughs> uh, Dick Sporting Goods, PetSmart. So every and anything that you want is right here in this uh, in this area here. And then over here you've got Costco. So access to all kinds of you know great stuff. There's going to be, and then there's going to be another furniture store uh, being oh building built right there on that building. Uh, it used to be a grocery store, but now it is going to be a furniture store. Uh, REI down here. So lots of good stuff. And then across the street, you know, I mean, it's just a, literally across the street, you got all kinds of other stuff. Barnes & Noble, um, Hobby Lobby, World Market, Amazon Fresh. You know, so other good, great shopping in that area there too. But if you want, you can, there's also what is known as the district. So the district has again a lot of great stuff here you've got uh the amc theaters oh in tustin mark or in the marketplace there's a theater there as well uh you know different restaurants uh tj maxx uh, bar louis 
you've got Pet Smart, Target, Lowe's, again, another Costco over here. And so, you know, you can see, and then there's a lot of other shopping and everything. So you're not going to have a lack of shopping, but you go, hey, wait, I want to go. I want, man, I want, I want the mall experience. And because those are mostly outdoor malls. Guys, we live in Central Orange County. <laughs> okay, so outdoor is cool. But if you want the mall experience, you can go over to Main Place Mall, which is right here. And you know, again, tons of great shopping. World, I mean, this is Main Place Mall is like world famous because you've got tourists all the time being bussed in to Main Place Mall because it is such a uh, it's a nice nice mall. And then you've also got another world famous mall right down the freeway here. At South Coast Plaza, so South Coast Plaza uh, Mall right here. Yeah, lots and tons and tons of shopping in there. That's a big, that is a big giant mall, and it's you know every time that we've been in there, almost every time that we've been in there, especially on the weekends, it is packed. Lots of restaurants, all kinds of great shopping, and then right across the street, you've got what's called Crystal Court, just another step up in uh, shopping experience over there and then you just hop on the on the 55 freeway head down to the beach and go get a tan with your new stuff so and then so you know one other thing that we have to wait is that an earthquake yeah it probably was uh, guys earthquakes let's talk about that a lot of people are you know, they hear the term earthquake and they are just, oh my gosh, it sounds so scary. And between you and me, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to discount earthquakes. We've had some real doozies over the last, you know, well, 50 plus years that I've, or well, 50 years that I've lived here. And while those come from time to time, the majority of earthquakes that we have, because we have the all the time. I mean, I would say almost even daily, but they're so small that even if you feel it, you're like, oh, I think we just had an earthquake. Okay. No big deal. And most people out here, that's how they treat it. They just go, oh, it's not a big deal. It's, it's, it was just a little earthquake. Uh, it's just part of daily living, but you're not even going to feel most of them. And if we do have a big one, uh, you know, I mean, obviously we can't control it. Nobody can control that. But in my opinion, from my experience of being here, we, even with some of the big ones that we've had, like Northridge and things like that, where you had, you know, freeways collapsing and stuff, uh, horrible, horrible time, they're so far and few between that I just don't think most people worry about earthquakes out here. I just don't think that that is the case. And, you know, so we just deal with it. But that brings me to weather. So what is the weather like in Orange County? Well, let me tell you. Most of the time, it's between, you know, in the 70s to the 90s. I mean, it is just gorgeous all the time. But as a result, we really don't have seasons. We don't have too many seasons out here. You don't see changes. You don't see that there are uh, leaves changing color. You don't see a lot of stuff we have. You know, very little rain as a whole, right? It comes during the winter. We might have total 15 days of, you know, decent rain in the area and then just sporadic throughout the year, you know, little, little bits of rain and things like that. But the weather is pretty darn consistent all the time. And that's another thing that why people want to live here because they go, gosh, oh, I don't have to unpack my winter clothes. <laughs> okay. But that being that said, uh, you have to understand that because weather is pretty darn consistent and when it gets down into the sixties, for those of us natives who have been here for a long time, we're like, oh my gosh, it's freezing. Right. I made that joke to somebody online the other day and they just like scoffed at me. I hate you. Um, <laughs> But you know what? We don't have to deal with a lot of the weather issues that a lot of people have to deal with. I would, and I would rather live here than, 
you know, in Tornado Alley or someplace that floods or something like that. Uh, so weather's pretty darn good here. Now we do get Santa Ana winds from time to time. Hey folks, Gavin Johnson here with some bad news. Looks like we still have that pesky wind advisory in effect. Yep, those Santa Anas are coming in, gusting up to 35 miles per hour. The devil winds. And uh, it's typically twice per year when we get those and they're, they're, they're warm winds that come through the area. And usually they don't do much damage, but every once in a while, you know, we'll get some real gusts. Uh, you know, something might happen. I don't know, your lawn furniture might fall over or something. <laughs> okay. Now, again, not trying to downplay it. There's times when it can get pretty, pretty gusty, but it usually only lasts a few days and then it's gone again. Okay. But one of the other issues that comes along with Santa Ana winds often is because it's warm, because it's very dry, it also tends to spark off fire season. So we have fire season around here, not necessarily in the city, right, but in the mountains and the hill areas and the parks and things like that is where fire season will um, have an effect. If, you know, a fire gets started, you know, it gets pretty quick, and especially if it's fueled by Santa Ana wind, then it can really get going. So it could get up into, we take a look at the map here, you know, we've seen it where, um, you know, it's coming up through the hills over here and has done some pretty good damage and affected a lot of the parks and things like that around here and, um, uh, and, and can get into some of the residential areas on the outer edges. Uh, I will tell you that in all the years that I've lived here, there was only one time that we received an evacuation alert. And I live more, you know, kind of over in this area here. Um, we, we received an evacuation alert and it, you know, we just kind of stood and watched and you can see the smoke coming up over the hills this way, but it never made it into, you know, into anything that was, uh, of significance so uh, but it's important to understand it and know it and be prepared and, and make sure your house is taken care of appropriately um, you know throughout the throughout the year as far as keeping things trimmed back and stuff like that so anyways I you know there's so many more things that I can say about Tustin you know great things and why I think it's a great area uh, but I think you just need to come and experience it for yourself come take a visit. So if you're thinking about moving here, buying a home here, then you know what? Can't help you if you don't call us. This is what we do. We help people all the time buy and sell homes in the Tustin area. And we would love to help you out as well. We're going to put out more videos. We're taking on some tours through Old Town Tustin. We'll take a walk through, through the district, through, um, through the marketplace, uh, through just a bunch of other neat little things that we think that would be helpful. So keep an eye out for those videos as they pop up on the channel or uh, if they're there, just go watch them. And we will talk to you sometime really soon, hopefully. Hey, take care. Have a great day. Anthony Nitz again with EXP Realty. Take care.